every morning I get up, I take a shower, wash my hair, put on conditioner, a little under eye concealer, and I'm ready to go. I would say I use about eight products a day. Before I leave my house, I use 12 products. I use about 10 to 15 products per day. I'll do a toner, an under eye, I do a spa treatment. I get lotion for my body. Lip balm, eye cream. <laughs> Sunscreen, a little eye cream. My hair is not the greatest, so I do use some product in my hair. I don't always know what's in my products. I'm trying to learn what's inside my products. I can't say that there's nothing bad inside my products. I try not to think about it. hundred. I'll go four hundred. Couple hundred. Eleven. The European Union and other countries have banned 1,300 ingredients from all personal care products. The United States has banned 11. Two thousand. I have absolutely no idea. Hopefully it was 2012. The United States has not passed a federal law governing the cosmetics industry since 1938. What? <laughs> Wait, seriously? I think it's a little bit crazy that people are using all these products and there hasn't been any regulation since 1938. When I look at a label, I see a lot of words, quite frankly, as an average consumer, I don't really understand. Butylated hydro. Tulonium. Benzalkimonium chloride. Formaldehyde. When I think of formaldehyde, I think of the liquid that we used to store frogs in. Methylchloriose. Methyl chloral isothiolacylenone. What's really exciting about Beauty Counter is we've done the homework for you. I started Beauty Counter to bring safe and effective products to the marketplace because everyone's health counts. We, we want to know what's in our beauty products. The ingredients in our products matter because our health counts. I count. I count. I count. I count most! My mom and my dad, they count for everything. My community counts. My wife counts the most. Everybody counts. The choices you make today will matter tomorrow. We're counting on you. So hi. Um, good morning. I'm Greg Renfrew, and that was my husband Mark on the video saying that I count most. <laughs> And every time we get into a little tiff, and including when I was practicing my speech this morning, I'm going to remind him that I count the most. I think that every single wife in America needs one of those videos, and I'd be happy to help, happy to help you make one. I'm really thrilled and honored to be here with you today. I have waited somewhat patiently over the past four years, hoping that Tom and Kate will allow me to share my story on the stage. But before I share the story, I want to tell you something that's important. I run a company that I founded called Beauty Counter. And Beauty Counter is a for-profit organization focused on getting safe products into the marketplace and addressing the very issues that I'm about to address. So I wanted to put that onto the table because we are a company wholeheartedly dedicated to transparency. And transparency is a somewhat overused term in the marketplace, but it's particularly relevant in the beauty industry where it is a virtually non-existent practice. It is for that reason that I stand here upon this stage, and it is one of the reasons I'm going to ask each of you to take action after you learn what it is that I have to share. But that's only the beginning of it. So I look around this room, and I think that I have a lot in common with most of you. As we've established, I'm married. I have three children you saw on the screen who I love very much. I come to Nantucket. I'm friends with Tom and Kate. I'm mostly, I, I, you know, when I speak to audiences, I'm constantly saying, I'm just like all of you. But here's where I'm different. I've spent the set past several years sort of in this black hole, trying to learn everything I can about the environmental toxins that we're exposed to in our products every single day. So going back a few years, I prided myself on taking care of my family. I made my baby food from scratch. I shopped Whole Foods for organic apples for my family. I encouraged everyone around me to exercise and to shop the local farmer's markets. I even convinced my husband, Mark, to offset our annual carbon footprint by making a donation to the Carbon Fund, uh, which, by the way, was probably one of my harder negotiations. Um, so I really was really proud of the fact that I was doing the right thing on behalf of my family. But that all came to a grinding halt when I learned a few staggering facts about our exposure to environmental toxins and subsequently the truth about the beauty industry. 
And so from that point forward, I've made it my life's work to really educate everyone I can on what's going on out there. Another thing that we probably have in common is that I have friends with cancer. In the past few months, three of my close friends have been diagnosed with cancer, two with breast, one with prostate. These people are in their late 30s and early 40s. They are fit. They are healthy, theoretically. They take care of themselves, and yet, right now, they find themselves sick. I, my brother's daughter was recently diagnosed with ADHD, and my best friend could never carry a baby to term. All three of my children go to nut-free schools. I don't know about you. How many of you, you can raise your hands, how many of you uh, grew up on peanut butter and jelly? Right? We all did, right? I took it to school all the time. But yet, my children go to nut-free schools, and you can't even bring anything with nuts, even in close proximity to their school bus or their schoolyard because of the severe allergic reactions in children. So let me ask you this. How many of you have suffered from cancer? How many of you know someone who is currently suffering from cancer? How many of you suffered from infertility issues or had a friend who suffered from infertility issues? How many of you have a child or know someone else's child who was born with autism, ADHD, severe allergies, or asthma? On this one, I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands because I already know the answer. Every single person in this room has been touched by one of these issues. And it's pretty scary. And it's impossible to ignore the fact that something is going on out there, that something is terribly wrong. So I want to share with you a few shocking statistics that kind of rocked my world. First and foremost, one in two men and one in three women will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime in the United States of America. It used to be that one in 20 women was diagnosed with breast cancer just a few decades ago. And now it's between one in seven and one in eight. Even more shocking to me is the fact that 90% of these women have no pre-existing genetic link to the disease. One in three children is born with either ADHD, autism, severe allergies, or asthma. And this is not just about increased diagnosis. This is an issue that is rising at a staggering rate in the United States. I'm not a geneticist. I'm not nearly as smart as some of the people who have been up here on the stage. Nothing like following someone who heads up you know, pediatric research in, children's, in a children's hospital that's you know, well-respected around the world. But I'm pretty confident in saying this. Our genetics have not changed drastically over the past few years or past few decades, and yet the health issues are rising every single day. But it's complicated because environmental toxins are in the world all around us. They're in the air that you're breathing right this moment. They're in the waves that my husband surfed on last night. They're in the furniture that we sit on, in our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces. They're in our pesticide-ridden food system, and they're in the products that we put on our skin. And that last category is the thing that really struck me, both my, my thought process and my imagination, because what you put on your skin is actually something that you can take control of, unlike some of these other things. But we need to take action now. Um, this, is, this is a nonpartisan issue. The fact that one in two men and one in three women are diagnosed with cancer makes it so. And yet our government isn't doing anything about it right now. So you saw in the video earlier that we have not passed a federal law to govern the cosmetics or regulate the cosmetics industry since 1938, which means that companies today are allowed to basically put anything in their products and also market to you in the ways that they want to. So how many of you out there are buying, I, I mean, I did this, right? This is me. Natural baby, you know, natural oatmeal foaming baby wash. I bought it all the time, right? I bought things that said pure, botanical, plant-based, natural, natural, natural. And yet, guess what? Those were all marketing terms. They are rendered meaningless in an industry that is self-regulated. A couple more stats that I'd love to share. We have introduced into commerce over 80,000 chemicals since World War II. And more than 1,000 are introduced every single year. And what's scary is that almost 90% of these ingredients have never been tested for their impact on our health. People often talk about the benefits and perils of testing on animals, but we Americans are the ones that, being, that are being tested on when we allow large companies to introduce products to the market with little or no safety data. On average, we Americans use between six and 12 products every single morning. And please, guys, don't tell me this isn't your issue. I often, I mean, I've been out raising capital over the last two years for our company, and people will say, well, I don't wear makeup. 
No, but this isn't about makeup, and this is not a woman's problem, right? Because we all do use these things, right? It's in the toothpaste that you use. It's in my lipstick. It's in your body lotion. It's the bubble bath you used on your children last night. It's, on, it's in our sunscreen, our deodorant. It's in all of our personal care products. So this is an issue that's not just about women. This is an American issue, and a very large one at that. Your skin is your largest organ. What you put on it matters. It matters a lot. Unlike your food system, our skin does not have the ability to metabolize everything that goes on, of it, on it, and much of what we put on it is absorbed immediately into our bloodstream. And chemicals, some of these toxic chemicals that are in these products, are very, very potent, even in small doses. Not to mention the cumulative exposure of these, of these toxic ingredients in our bodies over our lifetime. As Americans, we typically trust the things that are on our store shelves. I certainly did, right? I unknowingly went around buying things that I thought were safe and healthy for my family. But what I have realized over the past number of years, and certainly since um, I've been up speaking publicly about this, is that people typically don't know what they don't know, right? We, we just don't. And even in audiences as prominent in this, and, and Tom, you and I talked about this, right? You said, well, this is a pretty knowledgeable group, but I would argue that many of you in this room have not really thought all about, a whole lot about this issue, right? This is what happens, and I, and I saw my friend Lindsay this morning, right? You get up, and you go and you drink a green juice, and you feel really good about that, right? And then you work out, you go to yoga, you might meditate, you might go for a jog. But then you come home and you unknowingly are lathering your body from head to toe in toxic, poisonous chemicals. And I'm hoping that if nothing else today, that you will learn to draw the connection between what you put in your body and what you put on it. Because again, it matters. It matters a lot. There is something else that I know to be true, which is that we can do something about this. And I am filled with hope. In a world that is so scary right now, I am filled with hope in the fact that we can actually revolutionize this industry. I'm seeing it happening in the food industry, right? You see it with people who are forcing change through, through sheer will or through, through the empowered ability to, to effect change through, through information, right? Knowledge is power. And we, as American consumers, are powerful. And I would love to see this change happen one person and one product time at a time. We can do this. This whole thing started with me, but it's not about me. It's about all of you. And I'm asking you to take action and to help me move this market forward because it's so very important to our health. So here's what you can do. Um, I know we don't talk too much about taking action, but this is something that you actually can take action on. So first of all, I ask you that you go home tonight and you take a look at your toiletry kits. Right? And we have provided you and your gift bags with something called a never list, which is a list of ingredients that we will never use because they are linked to cancer, reproductive issues, organ toxicity, and severe skin irritation. Take a look at that list. Get familiar with it. If you want to take it a little bit further, please share the sense of responsibility and tell everyone that you know and you love to do the same thing, to check under their kitchen sink, to check their bathrooms, to look in their cupboards so that they are not putting toxic chemicals on the toe on their bodies. If this is something that you feel is resonating with you and you think you want to take further action, certainly with such a group, influential group of people in this room, please come find me because I would really like to see us affect change all the way to Washington. This is really, really important and the time is now to do something about this. So I will, I will leave you with this. Um, as I often say, there are so many things that we can't control in the world. We can't control the air we breathe. We can't control whether it's going to rain or shine. We can't control the world at large. We heard yesterday about so many issues that are happening. But you in this room, you can absolutely take control of what you put in and on your bodies every single day. And so I ask you to do this. Do this in the name of everyone that we have loved and lost. Do this in the name of all Americans, and do this in the name of our children who deserve better. I believe so much in this country, and I know we can do this, and I know we can do better. Thanks so much. Have a great day.